Amen. I want to invite Bo to come up, come up here. I, uh, I've been on vacation a little bit, and I, I, I knew some things were happening with the schedule, and I, I, I what originally I don't think was going to be here, but the Lord had put on my heart about asking Bo to speak in one of her services. I know he feels like he's got a call from the Lord on his life for ministry, and uh, the Lord really just dealt with me. I was at a, a beach house in Florida, and the Lord told me, Bo, he said, somebody gave you a chance, Justin. I want you to give Bo a chance. And so that's what's happening today. I want, we're allowing Bo in his 9 o'clock service to just to minister. Come on, somebody. Just to minister and preach and share whatever the Lord's put on his heart. He's going to be a senior this year at Wayne County High School, part of the football team. Incredible young man. He's grown up in this church. Uh, his mom's brought him here. I've watched his aunt bring him here. And it's just been incredible watching the Lord just grow him and use him. And so I want you all to help me just give Bo a big old God bless you as he prepares to preach today. Love you, man. Bibles, can you um, open up to Hebrews 10, 35, if you have your Bibles or you have your phone, whatever you want to use. I'm going to start at 32 and end at 35. Remember those earlier days after you had received the light, when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. That right there spoke to me hard. Do not throw away your confidence for it will be richly rewarded. Your confidence is your faith. And a lot of times when life gets hard or life gets tough, we want to throw away our confidence in God and we want to try to rest on our own, on our own understanding. We want to fade into the world and we want to fade into our own ways and fade into what we think is right and fade into what our parents may think is the best choice for us. But sometimes it's God's choice and it's God's way and that's the only way. And that's the only way that we're going to continue to make it through life. So the title of my um, sermon today is Don't Fade in Your Faith. If you would go to me, the next one would be Hebrew 11. 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Your faith is your confidence. If you do not have faith, you do not have confidence in God. You cannot tell me you do. Because our confidence is our faith. Our faith is our confidence. I'll come back to that in a minute. When you have confidence in something, you believe in it. You trust in it. You will follow it wherever it leads you to. So, if we do not have confidence in Jesus, we do not have faith in our God, our everlasting Father, who chose us before his own creation of the world. With this confidence comes a reward. It's not just eternal life, but it's God here on earth. With God, you get a relationship. You get a shield. You get a guard. You get a, you get a man that crushes fear. You get a way maker. Whenever you're in that dark, that dark room, you get a light. When you're in that tough situation, he makes a way. You get a miracle worker. When you're in the hospital room and you don't know what's gonna happen next, you get a miracle. When you get in a wreck, you get in a car accident, God was there with you. He was the miracle that kept you alive. So just remember that you get a reward. Now that's not what we have it for. But just remember that there is something that's gonna come out of your confidence and there is something that's gonna come from your faith. And it's, your faith does have a purpose. I 
I want to start first of all, and I want to talk about the crowd. The crowd oftentimes gets in our way. I know sometimes it has for me. I like to fit in sometimes. I like to have fun. I like to laugh. I love to praise my God. But sometimes we can fall into the crowd and the crowd is what separates us from the Lord. If we don't have our heart right with God, if we don't have our confidence. So I'm gonna talk about the story of Barabbas and Jesus. As most know, Barabbas was guilty of murder, but they locked Jesus up even though he was innocent. And the crowd reveled and, 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 and went against Jesus and wanted him to be crucified. And Pilate, whose, whose decision it was, he wanted to give the king of the Jews back, but the crowd convinced him different. And I feel like oftentimes we get convinced by the crowd. Oftentimes we fall into the crowd. Oftentimes we don't rely on God's understanding, but we rely on what people think around us, what they say, what they do. And that, and that decision that he made to not release Jesus led to the death of Jesus. Now as we know, that's great and that's almighty because the death of our God gave us everlasting life. But just remember that when you please, that you, when you try to please the crowd, when you try to fit in, that crowd may cause the death of Jesus in your life. It may cause your spirit to die. It may cause you to become spiritually dead, spiritually handicapped. So do not let the crowd overrule what Jesus has for you. With faith comes great personability. With faith, you have to get personal. If you have confidence, with, if you have confidence in something, a sport, a mentor, a motivational speaker, you're personal with them. They, they relate to you on a personal level. With God, sometimes we forget that he is the personal God, that he is the almighty and the all-powerful and that he's been with us since birth and before birth. We forget that God's been with us through the valleys, through the hard times, through the good times. He's been with us since we was young and he's, been, he's now with us even if we're old. He has never left our side. So with that great, with that, with that great faith, you have, to have, you have to get personal with God. You don't, you don't only get personal in this, in this sanctuary. You don't only get personal when you're around people and when you're in a church. You gotta get personal when you're by yourself. You've got to strengthen your faith on your own. You can always rely, you can always rely on the next person to come pray for you, to be louder than you so you can hide your worship. No, let your worship scream because that's what God loves. God loves your worship. He lo it, it may, some of us in there may cannot sing. But I tell you what, I'm gonna raise my voice because my God has done some great things in my life. Some amazing things in my life. So if you would go with me to Isaiah 41 through eight. Let me get to it. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double of, for all her sins, a voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged place is a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. 
I want to be a beautiful sunflower. I want the breath of God all over me. And the sun is bright, so my flower is going to be bright. Your flower is your spirit. You are grass. We are all blades of grass. I know that sounds very weird, but we are. But some of us, we grow stiff. And when the wind blows on a piece of grass, it usually moves. Or when it blows on a flower, it usually moves. But when we become stiff to the spirit, we lose our listening ears for God. We turn them off. And we begin to go back to our old ways. So continue to be a flower and don't become stiff to the spirit because when you become stiff to the spirit, you'll lose your faith. It says, it says in the uh, second verse, no, the, the third verse, my fault. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. If you could put the valley low for me, please. I want to hit on the point of wilderness and the valley low. In your wilderness, in your valley low, when you feel like you have nothing left, when you're in the bottom of that pit and you're, at the, you're in all that mud and all that grime of just hate and not knowing what to discern and what to do, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in your valley. Continue to walk on the path. Because God has asserted his plan for you and he has assorted your steps according to his plan. God's already made a way, but we've got to be straight in the desert. We've got to be straight in it. We can't go left or right. We've got to continue to move forward and continue to move in a straight path. We have to make a highway for our God. Sometimes we want God to move in our life, but we're not, we're not willing to sacrifice some things. We're not willing to move things out the way so that he can move. If you don't get rid of that friend that's, that's, that's causing you to backslide, how do you ever think that God's going to move in your life? If you, don't, if you don't quit idolizing people, how do you think God's going to move in your life? If you don't quit giving your valley low all the all the praise it don't deserve and not the good kind of praise, how do you ever think God's gonna move in your life? We want revival, but we're not willing to sacrifice. So as I say, prepare the way for the Lord, I also say that we are a bunch of books and we have been written, each one of us, in a unique and special way. Our cover should all be bright. It should all be a light to others. When they look at us, our, our cover shines. Now, when they open the book, it may be a little bit of pain. It may be a little bit of hurt. It may be a lot of pain. It may be a lot of hurt. But through our cover, the book still shines. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one who directed us to be in the womb. He's the one who directs us wherever we walk and wherever we go. He will be the finisher of our faith. He is the one that has a design plan and a certain agenda and a certain time and a certain place where we will, where we, where we will die and we will have everlasting life. Yes. The faith is going to get tough. It's going to get hard. There's going to be times when you want to give up. There's going to be times when you, you're just going to ask God, why can't it be easier? Why can't this sacrifice be easier? Why do I have to sacrifice this? But just know in the end that he is the finisher and that he has something great above us for him, for us, from him. My next point is don't let your faith grow fragile. We often hear the, 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 the term steadfast. Don't let your faith 
become fragile. Don't let your faith be easy to move. Because when your faith is fragile, your friends and your family that may not be living the same life as you, it becomes real easy to fall into temptation and to listen to them more than we listen to God. So continue to let your faith be steadfast and be strong in what God has planned for you. Sometimes we get caught up in, why don't I have this, God? Well, I need this to have the faith, God. Well, if I don't have this person in my life, if I don't have this preacher, this mentor, this book, whatever it may be, this, this iPhone, if I don't have this iPhone, I can't, I can't, I can't live, God. I can't, I can't still be in your word. And then you have... Well, God, I know you to be this. And God, I know that you've done this. And God, I know that you've done this for my life. And I know that you've done this for my family. But I'm just scared to take another step because I don't know what else is gonna be taken from me. God never never wants to hurt you. We just take stuff out of proportion when God really did it for our better. God takes stuff away from us that we don't even know. God allows, God doesn't allow stuff to happen for our good. So ask yourself, what do you know to be true? What do you remember about your God when you was in that valley low and he took you to that mountain high? When your faith was on the edge but he came and blew a fresh wind, the fresh fragrance of heaven, the fresh aroma of the Holy Spirit over your life and knocked you right back into your place and took his throne right back over your life. Be humble, be humble in your faith. Don't be hypocritical in your faith. Don't be derogatory in your faith. Be humble in your faith. Be courageous and be righteous, but also be helpful in your faith. Don't hate on another because their faith isn't as good as yours or don't think that you're better than them because your faith may be a little bit stronger. Instead, we should love everyone as God loved us and we should help everyone as he helped us. So when we're at our mountain high and somebody else is in their valley low, We should give a helping hand. Now we're not their savior and we're not their almighty God because there's only one and we know who that is. But we can help them. We can push them to get to where we're at. Gratitude. Be grateful for what God's already given you. Be grateful for the gifts he's given you. Be grateful for the little, you may not have a lot of family, you may not have a lot of support, but be grateful for the little bit of support that he has given you. Because that little bit of support is gonna get a long way. Be grateful for that gift to sing my, uh, that, that gift to preach, that gift to evangelize, be grateful for it, don't take it for granted. Be grateful for the house that you live in. Be grateful for the car that you drive. You may not have AC for a week, but God survived 40 days with no water in a desert where it was dry. So I believe we can go one week without AC without complaining. I believe we can go one week without a car, but we can still give all all of our praise to Jesus. Because he's been been there with us even when we didn't want him there. He's been there with us even when we pushed him away. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. 
for I already have it all. You have it all. That's all that you need right here. But God, I need my phone so I can watch Instagram reels. God, I need my phone so I can watch TikTok because that's the way that I get the Lord. It's the same thing as this. This, this was told to me about two weeks ago. If you want to be a leader, you've got to be a reader. This right here is the everlasting truth. Not saying that TikTok and Instagram reels are not. But God will speak to you in a different way when you read it from your own, from your own eyes instead of listening through your ears to people that you may not even know, that you don't know what their walk is like because not all pastors are real and they ain't all living the, great, the greatest life. And sometimes that can, that can secretly attack us and it can get secretly attached and we can fall short in our faith. Quit wanting so much. Quit being so ungrateful. God's given you all that you need. He gave us him. He gave us his only begotten son. Put the oil in your lamp. Put the armor on your body. Equip yourself spiritually with the word and let God lead you. In the wilderness, prepare the way. Trust God's promise. Trust what he has given you. Trust what he has promised us. He's promised us that he'll be our shield, our everlasting light, our love that surpasses all understanding, our strength in the tough times. Let God lead you. Quit trying to lead yourself because you do not know it all. You hear the, um, the saying, teens know it all. Sometimes the parents take it out of context. We don't know it all, but when we have our heart right with God, when he speaks to us, we listen. We may not be as smart as our parents, we may not know as much as our parents when it comes to certain things. But we can know the spirit. And we can know what our God is telling us and the visions that he's given us and the promise that he's declared over us. And sometimes I feel like parents can go against that in a certain way. And, and, and they're not meaning to, but they're, they're protective of their babies. And they don't want something to change. They don't want something to change for the better. But sometimes that sacrifice or that hard change that you never think would, that you never think would happen. Or my baby's not going to the biggest college. My baby's not going to be the highest paying career because I was told in this, in this world you need money to live. But I believe I need God to live, not money. I believe with God money will come and riches and wealth will come. So I just, I pray that we all let God lead us and quit trying to lead ourselves. Remember carefully. Remember carefully. When we start to go on rants about God, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Remember carefully what he did do. God, you didn't give me this. Remember carefully what he did give you. God, you didn't allow this to happen. Remember carefully why he didn't allow it to happen.
God, you didn't play my favorite song. You didn't allow my favorite song to be played. Remember carefully, David praised him with no worship band. David sung songs unto the Lord. Remember carefully that God has got your back, that God is always with you, that when you are confused and you do not know where to go, you do not know what the next step in life is for you, remember carefully that God has asserted your plan. He has assorted your steps. Remember carefully that God's faith is way bigger than ours, that his faith in us is way bigger than ours. We have been called to a great purpose, each and every one of us. And if you don't know what that purpose is, it's, it's, it's to disciple and to share the good news of the Father. So just remember carefully what God all has done for you. Next, I'm gonna be reading out of Isaiah 46, eight through nine. If you have me, if, you, if you're with me, you turn to your Bible. They lift their shoulders and carry it. They set it up in its place and there it stands. From that spot it cannot move even though someone cries out to it, it cannot answer. It cannot save them from their troubles. Remember this, keep it in mind. Take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning from ancient times what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. He is God. There is none like him. Keep it in mind that God was there in the midst of your trial. Take it to heart that God was spiritually prepared and spiritually ready for you when you weren't spiritually prepared and ready for yourself. And he drug you through that valley. He didn't leave you there, but instead he left the 99 for the one he fought for me on Calvary. He was there for you even when you weren't there for him, even, the, even when you were not there for him. He was still there for you. He does things when he wants to do them. He lives on the timeline of he can do anything that he wants to at any time that he wants to when he pleases. That's why his agenda is so perfect. Because he knows the exact right time and he can do it in the exact timing of what he wants to do it to. We live on a 24 hour time schedule. Our God lives on an everlasting life schedule. He doesn't, he doesn't, it don't matter if it's 10 a.m., 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 2 p.m., you're in the middle of a work session, he don't care. He does what he wants, when he wants, when he pleases, because he is the almighty God, he knows what's best for us, and he has faith in us, as we should have faith in him. I talked about gratitude and becoming grateful for what we have. When you become grateful for what you have, you begin to let God work in your life. You begin to give him everything that you have. You get God's view on things. You get God's view on your situation. You're in that trial and that battle. You say bump relying on everybody else. Just give me your view, God. And that may not be everything that you wanna see. There may be some hard times. There may be some sacrifices. There may be some blood, sweat, and tears. But God, just give me your view. Just allow me to see what you see. 
give me a vision in the valley when my eyes are blind and I cannot see. Holy Spirit, open my eyes and be the lamp unto my feet. Now when you get God's view on your situation and you get a vision in the valley, once you've been spending that time alone in prayer, you've been spending that time alone in fasting and praising the God when nobody else is looking, you know, I've, I've always been raised on this, champions are made when nobody's looking. Your faith is not made when you're in the altar. Your faith is not made when you're in the seats listening to a sermon. Your faith takes work, and if you're not willing to work, your faith will be dead. You reap what you sow. If you sow goodness and you sow strong faith into your life, if you go around planting seeds in people and working to save others too, I believe God's got a great harvest for you. But when you come back down to earth from having God's view on things, you come back from that quiet room, that closet that's got a lot of your tears, a lot of your blood, and a lot of your sweat, and a lot of your time, you come back to co-embark on that situation with diligence and wisdom. You don't come back and fall into your old ways. You don't come back and try to act like you didn't, didn't fully see what God had for you. You didn't fully see what God was gonna do, but you just know it's hard. And you wanna to try to miss a couple of steps and try to have it your way. But God says, my way is the only way. Give me your heart, for I already have plans for you. God gives visions in the valleys. When you're at that mountain high, you don't have that vision. Because God's done brought you through it. But when you're in that valley, you don't know where to go. You're lost and you're confused. You're stuck in the mud. You begin to give everything to God and say, God, all I want is you. He'll give you a vision. And like I said, it may not be what you want to see. But when we ask for God to give us a vision, sometimes it's hard. When we ask God to come and be the all of our life, to come and be everything that we know, it gets hard. When you're in that valley and you want that vision, get quiet. Don't continue that like you have everything in check. Don't continue that like you're perfect. Because I guarantee you people can see right through you. I guarantee people can see that you don't have it all in check, that you don't have it all right, because none of us do. Get quiet, become still in the presence of God. Begin to spiritually prepare and ready yourself. Get quiet and read the word. Get quiet when that worship song is playing and just let God speak. Because he can move mountains when we hush our mouth. He can make miracles happen when we just hush our mouth and just be quiet and listen to him. He can change that depression into joy. He can change that anxiety and that fear into happiness and love and courage when we just hush and we just let God talk to us. You can be a miracle in motion if you just let God work in you. If you just let God have his way in your life, you can be a miracle in motion. You can be a miracle and not even know it. Your spirit can be so strong, your faith can be so mighty. It just blows somebody you're walking past away. 
they get a fresh aroma of the Holy Spirit and their life can be changed. You can be a miracle in motion in your family. You may think God's not working. You may think, man, God, I'm doing all of this, all of that. But Lord, you are my shepherd and I shall not want. I'm gonna wait for your timing and wait for you to do it when it's, the time is right. Your vision must be visible and it must be vocal. When you get that vision, speak on it. I declare and decree this. I know this is going to happen because God gave me the vision. Often we hear, don't rush the process. Well, I say, don't rush the vision. When you see the vision and you see the plan that God has for you and you see the, the steps that he has you to take, they may be rough steps, but don't you rush that vision. Don't you try to step over the rough or try and step over the valley because God has it all set in place for a reason. Remember that the vision is from God's view. It's not from your view, it ain't from your family's view, it ain't from your mama's view, it ain't from your daddy's view, but it's from God's view. God gave you the vision and he's way above us and he knows everything that we're gonna do. He knows everything that our friends are gonna do. He knows everything that's gonna happen to us. He knows everything that's said about us. He knows everything that's, that's looked at us about. He knows everything that we've been judged on. Remember that the vision is from God's view and that you should trust in the vision if you have faith and you have confidence, then you should have trust. Lastly, praise no matter what. Don't let your praise die and don't let your praise run dry. Continue even in the midst of the valley, even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of the trial, continue to praise. Continue to have faith in God. Don't fade into the ways of this world. Don't fade into your friend group. Don't fade. If your family ain't living right, then don't fade into them. It's a, hard, it's a hard reality you have to get. It's a hard thing that you have to realize that sometimes your family is not meant for you in that season and that sometimes you have to evacuate the premises and you've got to change your environment or else nothing will change and your faith will not become stronger. So let God work and let God lead. Continue to have faith don't let, your rail, don't let your well run dry. You can go in and come on up, Pastor MK. Don't let your faith run dry. Don't let your spirit be dead. But continue to praise the Heavenly Father no matter what. So if we could all stand to our feet. I know it's early. I know that's a pretty long message. But, and I know I'm only 17, but I believe God can use you in any age you want to be used. So don't think just because of my age, I can't pray for you. Don't think because this cast, I can't walk. If you've been struggling, if you're in the middle of a valley, if you don't know where to go, if you don't know what the next step is in your life, if you've been fading into the ways of this world, if you've been fading into the into the ways of the enemy. If you've been falling to what he's been trying to distract you with, if you've been hurt, if you're in a lot of pain right now, if you need healing, I pray that you would just come up to this altar. If you're hurt, if your heart is hurt and it's broken, it needs to be mended. I believe God will give you a pure heart and a whole heart. So as I'm speaking, if you want to begin to just walk up to the altar. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're struggling, if you're having a hard time making it through, if you, if you, if you say, God, I just don't know where to go. God, I don't know what my next step in life is. God, I don't know where you want to lead me to. I pray that you just come to this altar and get some prayer.
Nobody's judging you. If they are, they're in the wrong place. Nobody's going to look at you any kind of way. But just reach out to God. Reach out to Him and let Him lead you. Don't be shy. Lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands. Hands lifted all over this place. Hands lifted. Praise the Father. There's no way you can sit here and be quiet. 